Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to JNA. Hi. Hi, here we are. Here we are. Um, I mean, uh, ho hopefully this system is working for everyone out there uh, listening. I, I mean, it's, uh, we feel like we've, it's groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. We've, ab we've abandoned the computer and gone right to the phone. I freaking love this. And you know what? I was listening to, I listened to CatNet. I know they're together. I know they're doing it on their phone. I know they're just using an app to just record. And I'm like, I don't know if they were using just the voice memo on their phone. Like, I know it's like this free app they use. Like, it's hilarious to me, uh, which I love. You know, a, a podcasting can be whatever you want it to be. Um, and that just proves that people want to listen to your message and, and who you are. And th the fanciness is not always the answer behind like success, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We just want you guys to be able to listen echo free. That's the goal. <laughs> that that literally and and for it for us to just say play go okay yes. like we, we we really need this to be easy on us you guys for us to continue because we absolutely love it but it, it can't be this big job because we have other jobs because we have one million jobs <laughs> we really do um okay so hopefully you guys are doing great um you know ça, ça avance bien and summer's here like summer hopefully the weather is freaking nice wherever you are um, I'm ready for heat. Yeah, this, well, I mean, we're recording a little bit ahead, but this past week has been cold. I know, I know, I know. And even what I see ahead, like, um, that's going to be around this time, it's just like 24. And I'm like, absolutely not. I want 34. Like, I'm really made for high heat, no. And 24, if there's wind, can still feel kind of cold. Now, literally 24 feels like 12 is is not what I want here. This is ridiculous. And we live waterfront, like where we live, even you, like I know that when you're in your back, like in Moncton, it can feel really hot sometimes. But like, I'm like, absolutely not. It is June, July. Like we need to figure this out, everyone. Um, and if I cannot have heat in the summer, why do I even live here? Absolutely not. So You're so passionate, so passionate about the weather, this girl. Uh, May, remember that May was insanely warm. I mean, it wasn't warm for May. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? Like we had good days. We had good days in May. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. See, we had uh, our friends open their pool, like, and I was looking at old pictures the other day and like May 14th, I'm in their pool. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's pretty good. I think you're also excited. It's not like, you know, like there's been like a few days where it's like, yeah, 25, whatever. But like, it's, uh, it's not about May right now. It's about it's not meeting your standards. July, June did not meet your standards. July better. Better. Exactly. Or else. Always been this way. So intense about like, I just like cannot handle wind and, and rain. And I'm like, I just, when it's windy, I'm a bitch. When it's rainy, I am sad. <laughs> I am not okay with rain. Like rain, I am like. Absolutely not. That limits my life, I feel like. Okay, yes. Okay, do you think that's why I'm intense about weather? Because I feel like the weather limits my best life. I, I think it is. I think that's oh. why. That's why. I'm like, I have life to live here, and I cannot live it in this temperature. Oh, my God. We've just, like, unraveled the mystery of what is Jose and her friggin' weather drama. Also, your wind situation with your ears. That's a big yeah. piece of it. Absolutely. But it's not like I just, I'll just wear something over my ears. It's not the pain of my ears. It's like in my face and like, yeah. pas anyway, no. wow. wow, not acceptable. Okay. So, um, we've been, uh, kind of, I feel like I love our meetings uh, at your weight loss right now. Like we're like getting people ready. We're like talking about the real things. I don't know. I really like it. Do you know what I feel like is finally, you know, when we, your way weight loss is a culture, your way weight loss is a way of thinking, right? Within our community group, there's a culture right. and, you know, you and I have been on for sure our own personal, like body acceptance journeys for the past couple of years. Yeah. And I finally feel like that's really trickling down to our members. Do you feel that as well? I do feel that. And I think that I'm, I think little by little, we're really like, getting our, our message across of like, there's no end look, there's no end number. And that's why we're different. And it's hard at the beginning when you're coming in at your weight loss with a look in mind, with a number in mind. And it's almost like you might feel like we're not listening. Like I thought of that. I'm like, I wonder if, you know, people that are new are like, bah, 
I want that and whatever. I'm like, then go for it. Nothing of what we do stops you. But we just want to bring on the table that maybe when you're halfway to your goal, that's going to be enough for that day, you know? So, and it's that conversation that's never been out there. It's been like, oh, great, great time to talk about this. Someone asked me, what are your goals and objectives? Like, do you have any like, um, like uh, physical goals and uh qu'est-ce qui défi en anglais um a défi uh something you would like aspire to like like that not that you struggle with but you're giving yourself that like ce défi là shit do you want to like uh, are you googling it right now yeah défi d e f i <sighs> nothing people are screaming right now in the thing wait i have to Change it from English. Oh, I got this. The- challenge. Okay. So what, like, what are your challenges? What is your next challenge? Okay. So people. Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So people drive on that. Like people are like, I need a, you know, I need a goal. I need a challenge. I need like, what's your next thing? And I'm looking at that question. And I said, and I said, you know what? I have zero physical goals like it's it's never like physical or on the scale anymore and I have been that girl and I don't take away from that but I just feel like that's where I'm at in my journey and that's like the next step whereas like my goals are all mindset driven like if I have any challenges or goals that I work on um it's all mindset and it's all to be happy le bonheur pure happiness Um, so even to the point where when I gained, you know, an extra two, three pounds, I said like, you know, I'm hopping on a calorie deficit journey. I really want to get back to my numbers and, but not at the strain. Oh, I don't have the right thing to, of my happiness. Uh, you know what I mean? Like not at the expense expense we oui, to my happiness. Like, and I realized that I was literally, if I was to change the way I was living was literally just to get back to those numbers, not because. Um, I didn't like, like I wanted to change how I felt in my skin. Like everything was great. It was just like, oh, I'm heavier. So I'd like to be thinner on the scale. Like, absolutely not. Like I catch myself and I'm like, no, you're not doing things just to be thinner. Like we're not doing that anymore. Um, you do things to be happier and to, to show up in your world as who you want to be. But anyways, um, someone replied to that story and said, I, I, I mean, I could go look, but Literally, what I understood was that she works on mental health. She like works somewhere in mental health. Okay. And she said, I'm so happy to hear that because when I help people um, work on their mental health, it's always what brings you pure joy and happiness, you know? Wow. Like that's the question you always need to ask yourself. Yeah. Um, and not what makes you thinner, what makes you way less, what makes you smaller. Um, and so she's like, I love that. Like all of your objectives are always mindset driven. It's very mental health driven, not physical health driven. And I, and yeah. I know that both can coexist and I know that both are important, but you guys, I truly believe that we don't have physical health if we don't have mental health. So in my mind, like I, I think I could be thicker and heavier and maybe uh, does that equal less physical health? I don't know. I actually don't think so. There's no like, you know, there's not like one line and one weight like, oh, now you are not physically fit. Like health is just so large. Like it's complex. complex. It's physical. It's mental. It's, it is, there is an aspect of health that is how much extra fat is on your body. But are we going to say- 32% 32% is bad and 31 is fine. Like it's <sighs> exactly. And I think that that's where you need to prioritize and value mental health because that's always there no matter what size you are. And I think that that's also all like what you're bringing with you that is kind of so valuable to every aspect, no matter what age or no matter what you're going through, when you have mental health um, and it's, and it's like rooting for you, you know what I mean? Uh, You'll be at your best. It's, it's legit. People assume happiness is coming from a size in their body. They're chasing it. They're on that hamster wheel. They're chasing physical betterness and they're waiting for it to just arrive, but it doesn't. 
imagine if instead of having those goals where, you know, and I've been that person. So I, that's why we understand this. So we're not like judging. We're just like reflecting on how we were, but like, I've also, you know, printed the calendars and be like, I'm going to work out a certain amount of time and I'm going to drink this certain amount of water and I'm going to eat this certain amount of whatever. And then I'm going to weigh this certain weight at this time. Like I've had those physical driven number focused goals. And now I'm just, I still have goals, but they're just very mindset focused, like mental health focused. And here's the thing, guys, is I I also truly believe that if you start chasing your happiness, weight loss will be a byproduct. It's not like it's not going to happen. Like, and I know that's hard for you to see if you're someone that's maybe kind of at the beginning of your journey, but probably, you know, binge eating in your pantry is not bringing you happiness. Eating to the point where you feel so stuffed every Saturday is not bringing you happiness. So remember that if you can adjust those things, And start acting in a way that aligns with who you want to be, weight loss will be a byproduct of that. I think it's more authentic weight loss. Absolutely. Like it's not someone (laughs) pushing down your throat weight loss and what it should look like. And what am I with the pushing down the throat? I don't know. It's my new thing. Okay. Um, (laughs) Steph will be so happy. (laughs) Um, But I think that. This is, this is where we're changing the narrative of what weight loss needs to look like, what's the end product and how to achieve it. And it's different and it's different. It's, it's different and it's, it starts different. It ends different. And, you know, people will be like, I don't know who I want to be. Then freaking reflect on what that is then. And, and it's not about who you're not. It's about who you are today. Um, what did I say? Oh, <clears throat> last night. I see a lot of people focusing on what they do not do. Like either they feel guilt about things they have not done um, or they um, feel shame and guilt or like I am going to do this behavior and I'm going to change my behavior by doing that behavior. And I think if we could change the language and not say I'm going to do that behavior, but just say this is the behavior I'm doing and how I'm going to start adjusting that behavior, not start another behavior. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So Jeff said last night, I was like, Ma, I am sore all over, Alicia. In in 12 hours, I did a dance class, a spin class, walk to spin, and then another spin class. That's in 12 hours, okay? All I did between those four classes of exercise is sleep. So like my muscles are very like, ugh, like my legs are just. Also, there's no water in that body. There is nothing in her body for there's water. No in the- um, so anyway, so. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry I did all of these things. And he's like, okay, lo, you didn't do an Iron Man. And I'm like, oh, we're not talking about the things I didn't do. We're talking about the things I did do. These are the things I did do. Like, we could just name a f- f- bunch of shit I didn't do uh, that are harder than what I actually did. Uh, but that's not what we're doing here. He's like, fair, fair point. <laughs> he just... You you talk about being your own like hype person. I have zero hype from my husband. So when you're waiting for another person to like hype you up, make you feel valuable, make you feel confident, I get zero of that from my husband. I'm sorry. And I don't need it. So like I don't need him to say I like a lo- your lower body the way it is. I know he does and I need to work on me liking my own lower body. Um, someone asked that in the, ask me anything. Like I see myself pushing away relationships because of my body image. You know, what's your, what's your first, um, what's your advice basically? And I'm like, and I I don't even know if I got the time to answer this person, but I'm answering it now on this podcast. And my, there was like so much to say, right? Like, holy shit. Like that's a big one. Yes. Um, that's a big one. That's deep, you know? Um, but honestly, there's like the piece of like, there's no magic. Uh, I, 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 there's nothing in a picture and me writing advice that's going to change your life today. Like step one, you good job on recognizing this. Step two is literally you working on you first and you deserve that because it's not coming from someone else. So there's like two steps here. You're not going to get that from someone else and you're actually pushing away people, but you're actually pushing away yourself. You know, that's what you're doing, you know, Um, you're missing out on experiences just based on your body. 
whether yeah. that's in being in a relationship or going to the beach or swimming with your kids, yeah. a lot of women can relate to literally missing out on experiences because of the size of their body. Yeah. Because of their body image. Because of they think that it's, yes, it's their, it's their, no one else is like, oh, so sorry. The, your body is not right for this. Uh, beef is closed for you. You have cellulite. Like no one's, you're the one that creates your own body image. So, and, and that starts with your thoughts. Like, so you, you think there has ever been a woman who got naked in front of a man and then was like, okay, let's have sex. And he went, never mind. Do you yeah. think in the history of the world <laughs> that has ever happened? Yeah, no. So the issue is not in the relationship with, with whoever. It's not in the new person in your life. It's literally the relationship with yourself. You need to work on your relationship with yourself because you deserve that. Not because you deserve that because you deserve a relationship with someone else. It's you. It starts with you because you deserve that relationship with yourself. Um and I think that that's, that's the work we do. Like when I think about the impact I want to have in this world is the conversation that's not been happening. It's not the conversation that have always been having and what you keep saying, what you keep seeing on social media. It's like, you know, we say walking is enough and then people are like, well, you don't just walk. Oh, absolutely. But I'm just saying that the statement walking is enough is still a statement that the world needs to hear because it's not being said enough, you know? Um, Oh, you have cellulite, but you still have abs. Yes, I do. But we still can show cellulite so that people can see that cellulite exists. Like, so it's like there's, there, for me, that's what we do. We kind of like simplify or uh, put on the table the conversation that we don't see enough of, you know? I agree. Uh, obviously, there was some new followers yesterday in your Ask Me Anything because I did see someone ask you what was the best oil to use. Yeah, to cook with. <laughs> what's the best oil to cook with two two words oil and <laughs> i wanted to screenshot and be like oh you're new here this is how we know you're new <laughs> um tell okay. me you're new without telling me you're new ask jose a cooking question oh my god we'll talk about summer systems later because we're doing great and i have another topic that i want to touch before uh where it's been 17 minutes we're not going to get into summer systems we're going to save it for when we have nothing else to talk about which will be never, wait, shit, am I forgetting the, oh, the question that just, I struggle with, we're going to end with this or whatever, but this is the next topic. Okay. Give us snack ideas. Oh my gosh. I could tell, but. Could you tell? I, yes, but it's because I know you so well. Tell it, us why that question it, is it, irritating. It's not irritating. It is a difficult question for me to answer. I okay. don't know what to answer is what okay. it is. I understand the question. I'm not irritated by it. Although I, I want my message to come across that like, it's literally like asking me what, I don't know. It's like, it, I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't see, I think that the, their intention behind that question is not going to give them the value that they want. So example, you ask me, what age Jeff and I met adds no value to your life, but I know you just want that information in your brain, right? I think that when you're asking me what snacks I eat is you think that my answer is going to simplify your life. And I know it won't. So that's why I'm like, ah, like that. I don't know how to answer that question because it's, it's, I, I will add no value to your life at all. You're actually just going to like keep scrolling. Like, because, Okay. And the chances that you give a snack idea that that person actually likes, they're familiar with the ingredients, they, um, like, it, it's just, it's, it's people still searching for someone to tell them what to eat. I know, and, and I've said this, and they don't like it when I say that, Alicia, okay? So I said this, and they're like, no, I just want ideas. Which okay. I get. There Which is. I, uh, yes, so that's why I want to talk about this, okay? Okay. But I'm like, guys, if you really wanted ideas, like there's an internet full of ideas. That's what I was going to say. So I really do see value in having ideas of new breakfast, snacks, meals. I mean, my gosh, I create a new recipe every week. Our cookbook is full of new recipes. And I literally love that. And I love when people share on the community group what they're eating. However, I'm not looking for like, my magical solution 
from what other people. I'm going to seek out that information if I feel like I'm getting bored with my snacks and make my own plan. Why is it, yes, yes to everything you just said. Why is it that people, like they could, I think they know they could Google, but they want to know what I eat. And that's the part that I'm like, you, like, and, and also, and they're like, I heard one girl, so cute. I heard on the podcast, you don't cook. Tell us how you do that. I'm like, I just don't cook. Like, it's not. I and, know. But then I'm like, I understand it. I don't have rules. So yes, I eat eggs for supper and I, I eat a salad at 10 a.m. So I don't eat breakfast. I don't need breakfast food. I don't need supper food. I don't need snack food. I just eat food just like you and and even if I tell you that I mix uh cottage cheese and peanut butter and cereal and uh syrup like I'm buddy the elf and blueberries don't forget about your blueberries blueberries and then put that on toast I'm not fixing like you know what I mean you don't even want that or like and Definitely. also, that's not Definitely. why I look the way I look. I think it's like, that's the, I, I just like don't know what the intentions are. I'm like, I literally just eat anything. I just eat anything. I think also when people are feeling like confused or looking for snack ideas, maybe they are really uh, focused on what the rules are of a yes. snack. Yes. And so they think a snack needs to look a certain way. Yes. And they're like, ah, oh, because, and also... We have a more traditional, more stronger understanding of what breakfast, lunch, and dinner look like. We know what they should look like, but snack is a little bit more varied. Like you, you think Boston creams are snacks. I wouldn't label a Boston cream as a snack. Um, so maybe it's because that's different for everyone. I don't know, but I, I see that. I see that. And like, I don't label like that my lunch needs to be a certain amount of calories or that it's more food. I literally eat food like I can't I can't and and I understand I just keep saying it like I mean it's good and like I understand people want ideas on how to like keep it simple but like I think that they're not ready for my answers is what I think like I'm like I every everyone in my family eats different what it what it, uh, I think it's time to eat what do you want to eat that's how I live my life and most people don't live their life that way and they'd be, they'd be so uncomfortable to live yeah. that way. So yeah. I'm like, if you were like me, you would have figured that out already. Does that make sense? Like, like, as I in think like there's more people like you though, that are still fighting it because, because you're not what society would deem as like what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to all eat the same and sit around the thing. And oh. I, and also you're supposed to always have, you know, X amount of portions of fruits and vegetables and your kids are supposed to eat all the things. So, but I actually think there are way more women moms that are in your position, but are still fighting it. Yes. So I guess when, if you're wondering through, if you're like, oh shit, I'm the person that was like, oh, what does she eat? How does she do it? Literally, I, what I feed my family will not work for your family. All you can take away from Jose's way is that there are no rules. Yeah, Maybe that's the best way. Like, there are no rules. So, like, I don't eat with what my family eats, not because I'm like, I'm trying to eat healthier. Just because in my family, we don't value what other, like, we don't value that time of day. It's just like, oh, shit, it's time to eat again. What do you want? These are your options because that's what's in the fridge. Like, that's how I feed my family. And I say it out loud and it makes people uncomfortable sometimes. But I'm like, but you asked what I eat. And like, I can't, and like, I literally can't tell you. Sometimes my mom drops off something. Sometimes my mother-in-law drops off something. Sometimes we go pick up Subway. Sometimes we uh, make a sandwich, you know, like we just like are like, oh, it's time to eat. Like, it's just the way our family dynamic is, you know? Yep. And I mean, I could tell you at any given time what she has for snack because she just rotates the same 10 ingredients basically. And she's like, look, I made this new thing. I'm like, no, you just put the same shit, but just on a different vessel. But awesome. Um, and you know what? The same for me, though. The way that I run my family, probably a lot of people would be miserable if they tried to do what I do because I've been at this for 10 years. It's been 10 years since Alfie was born that I was presenting this routine and someone could try and come in and do what I do with my family and they would be miserable. 
I just feel like at the end of the day, it's the shooting that's the problem right now in society. Like, I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just like not being um, uh, sucked into what is better and what is best and what like, holy shit. Even the oil question, you know, and guys, we're not upset by any of your questions. We love oh. your questions. We okay. love your questions. Okay. Um, but it's like better for what? Yeah. Better that's for what? Like, I think people are asking, like, are they healthier? Like, basically, every oil is about 110 calories per tablespoon, every no matter which you use. So which do you prefer? You know, like, really, which do you prefer? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but I, what I do love is that we are so different in the way that we do eat and run our families when it comes to food. And I think that people see us both as being successful with our weight loss journey. And so I think that shows them that it doesn't have to look just one way. Yeah. And I truly believe that there is not one way or one behavior or one way to do this that doesn't have consequences. You know what I mean? So like, I think in every way there are like things that like, because I do this, yes, this happens. Oh, because you do that, that can happen. I mean, anything can happen. Uh, Absolutely. So like, I feel like, oh, my kids don't eat a lot of vegetables. Oh, they won't eat vegetables as adults. Yeah, that, that can happen. It could also not happen. They could also like, you know what I mean? Um, so funny that like a mom sent me a message and she's like, I don't know what you're doing at home, but oh my God, Dia eats so good. Like, wow. And I didn't know what that meant. Eat so good. What does that mean? Uh, that's just like hilarious to me. I'm like, perfect. No problem. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. That is a compliment. I don't know. I, what think, that when, I think when people say that they, um, I, it's, it's, they're talking about kids who eat maybe like adult things, like kids that'll eat vegetables. Right. I think that's what, I think that's what people, oh, your kids, when someone says your kids are good eaters, yeah. I don't think it's like how much they eat. Maybe it's like the variety of what they'll eat. Ma I didn't even ask because I didn't even want to label what that meant. Yeah. I, in her mind, it was positive. Yeah. <laughs> I, good. You had my daughter for a, a sleepover and you feel like she is a good eater. Whatever that means. Perfect. Thank you so much for that uh, comment. Um, but uh, I definitely prefer kids on sleepovers that will eat whatever. Those are my yeah. favorite kinds. She is definitely that kid um yeah she'll be like oh she she loves she loves that she just doesn't have a mom that offers her that so later on when she goes to places she loves what they made like oh my god we had tacos i'm like cool um but uh yeah like i mean i'm like anything that, and i always offer like i'm like come with me it's always tell me what you, i will bu buy anything i will try anything that you want and then she realizes that she likes to switch it up like every single day um but yeah no i feel like you know, even yesterday with all those little girls, like I see her relationship with food is different. She could not care less that the food was there. She stopped after one piece of pizza. I was like, I'm peace out. I'm going to go play. Whereas everyone else were like eating all the things. Like she has a different, like she's chill around food uh, compares to uh, whatever. Maybe that's a benefit from how I do it that we're just like kind of like doing our thing and we're not as like sit, eat all the things. I mean, but there are benefits to like, maybe the other kids are more um, sitting and eating and doing their thing. Like, I feel like at the end of the day, everyone's just doing their thing. Everyone I has know what you're, what you're saying is there's no one thing that you they, can yeah. do that will ensure that your kid doesn't struggle with their relationship with food at the end of the day. You, there is nothing. There is one way that there is not because they are other humans. They are, They have their own like. You can do whatever you want as a parent, but your kid is still has their own way. Like, you, you know, you just have to do what feels best for you and what feels right for your kid. Like you are yeah. the parent, you know, your kid the best, like just do it. How, what feels right for you? It feels, you know, what feels right, whatever you can survive. <laughs> like, I feel like at the end of the day, like you're a person too. Like you, if you're like, oh my God, that is so much work on me. That is so much. Like, it's not me. Like it's not who I want to be. Like, don't like there's again, I'm, I'm sorry, Alicia is not a better mom than me because she eats and holds hands with her family. Uh, but she's never made me feel that way. Society could make me feel that way. It fucking doesn't matter about society. What I make myself feel like. And I'm like, I'm a great mom. And, and do you know what, though? It's funny, like, we, we value certain things in an odd order because, like, you fucking go to the park for yeah. hours and people be like jose is such a good mama she takes her kids to the park not alicia shittiest mom ever she does not talk to her children exactly and like at the end of the day like that's like not you 
You know, like it's not you. I don't see you sliding. Oh my God. Absolutely not. Also like the only thing I'm doing while we're at the park is being at the park. So like that's automatically we're out. I need an, at least one other task. Exactly. No, I, and I think that like, that's where you need to like, how have we gone to a place where all moms need to behave in a certain way? And not only are they all different, think of this, all moms are different humans and they are raising different humans. So like, how can all moms have like, how is there this pedestal of how moms should behave when they're not even raising the same type of kids? And they're not even the same type of humans themselves. It's just too much. Like It's just too much. And it's also left over from when most of moms didn't have a, a job outside of the home. So we're still acting like we don't have another job, but we for sure have another job. Uh, yes. And a social life. And like the times have changed, everyone. Times have changed. <sighs> Time to catch up. Just because yeah. I have a vagina does not mean I should be in charge of all the things absolutely not and often I'm like I just uh, the, the, I feel sad that the only reason why I need to do this is because I own a vagina right now that is not okay <laughs> um and that's where I'm like this stops now you know what I mean Canada Post was uh on my court I just wanted to double check they didn't Canada have anything was for me. with my door <laughs> she's said. like hey hey Tom <laughs> Oh my God. I love how you order so many things. Okay. You guys, we've talked enough at you. Uh, thank you so much. Follow us on Instagram right now. It's summer. We're having our, our living our best summer lives, especially on our, on our, um, individual or, uh, personal Instagrams, but we're keeping you busy. We're keeping you entertained. So come and find us and, uh, we're going to keep you uh, up to date on our podcast three times a week. Okay. Bye guys.